I'm good. How are you doing? All right. Just before we get started, why don't you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Brandy Bartlett. I'm a junior at Utah Valley University studying business management. I'm known for my organizational and creative problem solving skills, along with my ability to collaborate and work well with others. For this reason, I want to be a business consultant. I want to see businesses in my community thrive and become prosperous. Okay. Uh, tell me about a time when you showed initiative. What prompted you to get started and what were the results? Yeah, so um, about a year ago, there was a bunch of contracts. I'd say about 10 contracts that were totally mixed up. All the dates got mixed up on them and it was gonna be a huge issue. Within all of those contracts, it was about a quarter of a million dollars in sales. And so we were kind of eager to make sure all of these got corrected and that we could get them fixed. And we knew it was gonna be kind of hard to get the customers to double sign contracts, you know? And so um, what I did was I created a flow chart to make sure that, you know, everyone was able to take action and making sure everything was able to move forward smoothly and that we could save these contracts. So by doing so, I presented it to our owner and we moved forward and were able to save the majority of those contracts and it ended up working out really well for us. Okay. Uh, what was the most useful criticism you had received from an immediate supervisor and how did you embrace this feedback and achieve a positive outcome? Yeah, so during the time of the corona, there was a lot going on and I was kind of overwhelmed. We had a lot of big projects we were trying to move forward. And I'd say like during that time, I was just getting very stressed and I felt like I wasn't achieving my maximum mm -hmm. um, amount of work that I could do. So I was getting a little bit worried and um, I talked to my supervisor, who's also the, um, the owner of the company. And when I was talking with him, I was just telling him how down I was feeling, like I wasn't meeting all of the goals and expectations that I had for myself. And he took me, told me to just take a moment to pause and reflect and appreciate all of the things that I had actually done for the company and to not be so hard on myself. So I think I, I get into these really perfectionist habits where mm -hmm. I just want everything to be perfect. And so he said to, <clears throat> that it really is helpful if you just aren't so harsh on yourself and if you, you know, give yourself a moment of appreciation. And when I took a moment to reflect and, you know, apply that criticism that he had given me, I realized that I was able to move forward comfortably and confidently with the rest of the projects that I had to do. Okay. What does business ownership mean to you? And give an example of when you're most successful at it in your prior roles. Yeah, um, so with business or business ownership, I think it really means, for me, it means, you know, you're going to give your all to it. It means that, you know, it doesn't matter if you have to stay up late and finish a project or if you have to wake up a little bit extra early in the morning. It means you're going to give your all to that project and it really means that, you know, you're going to embrace it and you're going to just give it 100% of your attention. And so I would have to say that um, a time when I recently like had an example of that. There's a department that I actually started up within the company that I'm currently at, Brew of Solar. Mm -hmm. um, we had never done cold calls before. A lot of companies had previously tried to do it, but they were super unsuccessful in it, and it actually had gotten a lot of companies into debt when they tried to you know, do this. Um, I was looking at the numbers, and I felt like it would make sense for our company to, to try and pursue it. And so I came up with a, a plan, and I really felt a lot of ownership in this plan. And through giving it my all, we actually were able to make it successful. Oh. Can you give me an example of when you fell short as a business owner? And why did you fall short and what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, so um, actually a couple months ago, there was a time when I think things were a little stressful. I felt a lot of um, need to succeed and I wanted more than anything just kind of like I realized that where I was falling short was I was kind of wanting the glory for myself. I was you know, in all of the reports that were going on and, and different things like that, I wanted it to look good on myself. And it wasn't so much thinking about my team. I was getting more in these competitive habits where I wanted, you know, everything to look good on myself. And so when I took a moment to step back and realize that this is a team effort, I was able to do one-on-ones with all of my team members, maybe the ones that were underperforming. And I was able to really help each person um, thrive and succeed in their own way. And then our company was able to do better when I was able to do, you know, more of that focus more on a team aspect than rather than just myself. Okay. Can you tell me about a plan? Uh, tell me about your most recent business plan and how it's organized and how you implemented it. Yeah. So um, this is going back a little bit 
to what I was talking about previously. Um, so this business plan that I had, it was to do cold calls for the company that I'm in. So we are, I'm currently overseeing an offshore call center. Um, it's in the Philippines and um, we had worked with this call center a little bit previously to do a couple small projects, but after a while their, our owner just said, you know what, let's just kind of cut this. Um, I, I still saw a lot of potential in it and I knew that it was something that I wanted to carry out. So I came up with a business plan, just said, all right, let's just give it a couple weeks. Let's um, try out, I'll, I'll create a script and everything and let's see if we can make this work. And so I created this plan, brought it to the owner. He said, you know, you have two, work, two weeks to see if it'll work and then let's move forward from there. So we gave it a shot and it actually ended up being very successful. Okay. Uh, can you describe a time when you took it upon yourself to make a change to your business plan? And what was the change that you made and why did you make it? Yeah, so when, um, like I was saying, so when we started this off, it was completely brand new. So I came up with the scripts and everything. And for the first little while, it was working okay. But after a while, we also started noticing that there were maybe a couple of issues with the script itself. That, you know, some parts of it maybe wasn't worded correctly and got a couple customers confused when we would show up to their homes to try and like explain to them this solar plan. Um, they were kind of confused because of the way that things were worded in the script. So what we did was we kind of analyzed the script, realized, you know, what's the best way to present this information to the customer? And when we made those small tweaks, we actually saw really great results in like the quality of the customers that we were producing after that. Okay. Um, so tell me about a time when you didn't agree with the corporate strategy or initiative. What was the strategy? Why didn't you agree with it? And what did you do? Yeah, so I worked directly with the owner of the company. He kind of helps me oversee some of our offshore work. Um, what he had a plan to do was he put everyone kind of in these rankings. He asked me to put like who my top performers on the team were down to who the, the lowest performers were. Mm -hmm. And then he also made a ranking of like who our best solar closers were down to the ones who didn't perform maybe as well or had the cl lower closing rate. Mm -hmm. And his idea was kind of to, to match up the best with the best and the worst of the worst. Um, his idea was kind of to get more um, more bang for your buck, uh, as a way to say it, you know, get get the best to feed the best and we'll get the most out of that and then the worst ones will just kind of like let them produce whatever they might produce. So at first I could kind of understand where he was coming from, you know, trying to get the, the most out of what we had, but um, after a while I was talking with one of my other co-workers and we, we realized some of these problems that I had, might, might have had, like especially in that lower tier we realized, oh, you know what, these people are probably going to get a little bit discouraged, you know, the, the lower performers, you know, they're already not setting a lot of appointments, and then they also know, like, they're going to the bad closers who aren't closing as well, and so they're probably just going to get really discouraged. So we realized that it probably wouldn't be the best for the morale of the, the whole team, and so we presented these issues to the owner and said, you know what, it might not be the best as far as, like, the team as a whole goes, and once he saw those issues as well, we decided to just revert back to our, our normal way of doing things, which was working well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, tell me about a professional sales achievement you were most proud of, and can you outline the steps that you took to achieve this goal? Yeah, so right here with me, I actually have a chart of some of um, the, those that, the numbers that um, I'm going to refer to here in a second. Mm -hmm. um, so during the time of the coronavirus, we actually... Um, we wanted to make sure that business could, you know, keep going without skipping a beat. And we wanted to make sure everything would just, you know, run nice and smoothly. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we, we made sure that we would double our efforts as far as phone calling. You know, it wasn't as easy to do the door-to-door -door knocking. So we made sure to double those efforts. And we came up with some sales goals that were very advantageous. And we were actually able to exceed them. And during the time of the coronavirus, as you'll see here, um, these numbers in white are the numbers that my team produced versus these numbers of the, the rest of the company as a whole, um, minus my team. And so we were actually able to produce over half of everything that sold in that time um, because we were able to execute some of our ideas of, you know, doubling efforts and just, you know, using what we had in a smart way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, can you recall a time when you were less than pleased with your performance and what did you do about it? Yeah, I would say there was like a few months back when there was like a two week period 
when everything was kind of getting to a low spot. Um, and I don't necessarily have direct control over the, the sales, you know, um, it's not me actually there on the phones talking with the customers, it's more of just like a, a managerial position that I currently have. Um, so what I realized was, you know, maybe right now everyone's just kind of in this lull where, you know, maybe feeling a little burnt out or, you know, everyone's working so hard, doing such a good job, they kind of just felt a little bit of burnout and maybe was losing their fire a little bit. So we came up with an incentive program that was kind of kind of put everything into tiers where, you know, if you were able to produce a, at a good amount and if you're, you had higher sales that week from what you had um, produced, mm -hmm. then there were tiers to get an extra incentive and an extra commission on top of their normal commission. And when we announced this um, incentive in initiation that I had presented to the owner, uh, we actually saw the numbers just go straight up that week and then they like, stayed that way for the rest of the week so it was actually quite incredible how you know just this small incentive was able to get everyone a lot more um, motivated to work hard that week yeah it sounds like it's made a big impact yeah um tell me about a time when you identified a new unusual or different approach for addressing a problem or task how did you come to this solution and what was the outcome yeah so during the time of the coronavirus it was super unfortunate you know, we all know lots of people who, who lost a job during that time. And Brio Solar, we didn't really want that to happen to our company. You know, we, we treasure each member of our team and we didn't want to have to see so many people losing their jobs like we did see in, in a lot of other, even sales positions. Um, so during this time, um, I had the idea, so as I've mentioned a couple times, I do I oversee a cold call center. A lot of the other ways that we get leads right now are from people doing door to door, um, just knocking and so um, at that time I knew that all of these people who went door to door due to the coronavirus they weren't going to have that opportunity anymore due to social distancing. Um, so I had the idea I went to the owner and said hey what if I take just the next week and a half and do an online training with all of these uh, door knockers that we have and we can just go over it and um, I can teach them how to do cold calls. I know it's not something they've done before it's kind of out of the ordinary but I think it could be really, you know, be successful and we can really help these people save jobs. And um, due to those trainings that I, I gave to them, we were able to save the jobs of over 20 people. And they were able to, you know, without skipping a beat, just keep on their sales track. It was able to help the company so that we, you know, didn't have to deal with the problems of, you know, losing workers and losing a lot of sales, that we were able to continue on that sales path. Uh, can you give me an example of a time when you successfully persuaded your peers to change their minds and follow your recommendations? Yeah, um, when I first started with the company, I was actually also just doing phone calls. That uh, was, was my first position. Um, when we were doing this, um, we were marking all of our leads a certain way, just dispositioning them based off of you know the result of when we called them. Um, and it was working okay, you know, not a whole lot of issues with it or anything. wasn't the most efficient way either. Um, me and my boss, we kind of came up with an idea at the time of, you know, what might be the best way to disposition these so we can get good, accurate reportings in our Excel sheets. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of came up with a new way. It was a lot more inconvenient and a little bit more time consuming, but we knew that in the long run we would get excellent reports from it. So everyone at first was kind of a little bit upset that they had to take this, this extra step. Um, but as I led by example, and as I explained to them how this would benefit us as far as our reporting went, it actually ended up being extremely beneficial and everyone, you know, got on board within a couple weeks and, and we were able to do it that way. Um, what do you feel you have to offer above the average employee when it comes to accomplishing your daily responsibilities and goals? Can you share specific examples? Yeah, um, one thing that the owner of the company, my direct supervisor, is constantly saying to me is he's grateful for the, the care that I put into the company as a whole and the loyalty that I have. Um, and I, I would say those are two of my strongest qualities as well, is just I, I care about things a, a lot and you know I don't want to see anything go wasted away and I'm extremely loyal to whatever company I work with. Um, with the current company I uh, am with Brio Solar, um, I've had so many ways, waves of co-workers quitting. Um, there's been, you know, whenever something that they disagree with happens that like a new initiative or a new announcement, 
if they disagree with it, I'll just see a bunch of people quitting all around me left and right. Or if times get tough, they kind of, you know, just all jump ship. But I'm not the type of person who's going to jump ship when times are tough. I'm the person who's going to stick around, make sure that everything is problem solved, and make sure that we can get everything back on track and, and just stick around for the long haul. Wow. Well, that's about all the questions that I have for you. Before we wrap up, do you have any questions for me before we finish? Yeah, I do have a question for you. So one thing that I've loved in the uh, company I'm with, Bureau Solar, is that there were so many opportunities for growth. Um, would you say that your company also has a lot of opportunity for growth? Yeah, I think a lot of our current managers are getting older and getting closer to that kind of retirement age. And so I, I imagine in the future there should be a lot of positions that open up and there should be a lot of room for growth. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and before I head out, I just wanted to say thank you so much for this opportunity to interview with you. Um, I've enjoyed the opportunity to get to know a little bit more about your company. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you guys soon about this position. And I would just absolutely love to work with you guys. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>